Time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. You know, my friends, you've been hearing for a year is uh, this is the time when the politicians come out of the woodwork and they're telling you they're going to do all these great things for you. You're being bombarded now with 30-second commercials on who's the best for the governor, who's the best for this, and who's the best for that. I've been doing this Sam LaSant show since 1994. You know, I heard, folks, our taxes are coming down, the you know, energy prices will be coming down, uh, we're going to take care of your, uh, your, your expenses, we're going to make your life fabulous. Since 1994, the Sam LaSant show has been on, and folks, what do we hear? Rhetoric, rhetoric, rhetoric. May 20th is so important this year, it's a primary election, and I know what you're saying, ah, they're all a bunch of bums, ah, they're all the same. No, they're not, folks. What I ask people to be doing over on many years on my show is to check out the facts. Know who these people are voting for. You know, an interesting thing happened over the weekend. I was told by a friend of mine, he says, we just got called. We have to vote for this particular person for governor. What do you think, Sam? I said, so you're going to vote for a person because someone called you on the phone and they said you should vote for this person without even knowing it? That's why this country is in a mess, folks. We're in a mess because we let people tell us how to vote. Now, May 20th is a very important election in the 17th Congressional District. One of the people running for that office is Dr. Dave Moylan. He ran for office in Schuylkill County, and he, uh, he, excuse me, he ran for coroner, and he was elected. Now, on the Sam LaSant Show today, we're going to deal with facts, only facts. And let me welcome uh, Dr. Moylan on the show. Doctor, thanks for coming on the Sam LaSant Show. Sam, it's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, I want to thank you for this opportunity to address the voters, number one and also to present some facts rather than just chat with you. Well, here's the, and this is what I just said, and with all due respect to anyone who's running, okay, uh, everyone's a nice person. I mean, I've been listening to this bull for, for years, and I say bull because it becomes depressing, doctor. We hear people running for office, our energy costs are supposed to be down, you know, the, 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 the debt, which I'm sure you're going to address, is, is going to the roof, it's affecting every one of us, and people get disgusted, they don't want to vote. So now, here's May 20th coming on, and you're running for Congress, but however, for those people who do not know, they know of you, you're the you know, Schuylkill County coroner, and according to what has been done so far, great things are happening. They're facts. They're not just me saying that. But let's talk a little bit about you and why you want to do what you're doing. Well, first of all, Sam, I'm not a politician. I'm a medical physician. And give you a little bit about my educational background. I studied life sciences at Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the early 70s, and from there I uh, went on to get my MD degree at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. I did a couple years of residency in internal medicine, and then I finished up in radiation oncology, training under Dr. Simon Kramer, who's one of the pioneers in that uh, field. Came up here to the coal region in 1986, where I've practiced since then in Pottsville, and more recently as director of the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute in New Philadelphia. But uh, also have a presence in Carbon County. Since 1988, I've been director of the Joint Center for Therapeutic Oncology right in Lee Height. Height. So now you want to run, you want to be the congressman for the 17th congressional district. What do you stand for? And I think you have some bullet points so people could see them. And tell me why you're, you want to run. Well, again, uh, I mentioned this in previous uh, interviews, but what got my attention was the voting record of Matthew Cartwright. Contrast it with our former congressman, Timmy Holden, who held the office for 20 years. And in the last 16 years, Timmy Holden's right to life uh, voting re record was 76%. Our new congressman, over four votes in the last year, he has a 0% voting record, 100% uh, Planned Parenthood favorability uh, rating. And that's what's got my attention, and that's why I'm here. But there's many, many other issues that um, we need to talk about. So let's put those points up and, and, and discuss them, uh, if you will, Andy. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to see why you are doing what you want to do, okay? Uh, the, uh, the bullet points that, you have, that you're presenting right now, what does D David Moylan stand for? Okay, and let's address those because we're dealing with facts and before I'm going to vote for anyone for U.S. Congress, and I hope that people come out to vote May 20th, Let's go over these. Well, I, I mentioned being pro-life, and it's not a little thing I want to hide. I'm proudly pro-life, and I would like to champion that uh, issue. And Mother Teresa gave us some advice, and this was 20 years ago or so, when she was addressing uh, 
the uh, prayer breakfast in Washington, D.C., and famously uh, President and Mrs. Clinton were sitting there kind of twiddling their thumbs while she was talking about the uh, crime of ab abortion. But what she, the advice she gave us was fight abortion with adoption. And I hope that later on this summer I could be on a panel here with a couple other gentlemen that uh, are continuing to serve the country. And that would be Representative Tom Marino and our Lieutenant Governor, uh, Jim Cawley. Both have adoptive families. So I'd be proud to help to f get information from them how we can further that, those and, goals. And, and as I said to you before, you know, you're probably pro-life. You know, I, I like these people who have all these benefits that are telling how they're going to help kids, but in the same token, they're for uh, killing the kids before they're born. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, amazing to me how you could, how you could say, I'm going to, I did this for chips and I did this and I did this and I did this for all the kids, but yet they're all for killing the kids. Uh, it's, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. All right, you're constant. Cool. Yes. Sam, yes. This is a pocket edition of the Constitution of the United States. And whenever I'm asked to vote on an issue, I'm going to get this out and review it and see if it's, uh, the legislation is authorized by the Constitution. Mm -hmm. That would be one question I would ask. So I believe in the constitutional principles. The other thing is, can we afford it? Uh, how badly do we need it? My mom used to say, it's no bargain if you, can, if you don't need it. So do we need it? Yeah. And then can we afford it? Is it worth borrowing 46 cents on the dollar to, to make that purchase? Your other reasons for borrowing, you have the constitutional principles and, and protection of second right amendments. Expand uh, on that for me. You know, without the second uh, amendment, the rest of the Bill of Rights falls apart. We, we need to be able to protect ourselves from all enemies, domestic and foreign, and that's an important part of it, and it's being eroded. Um, Religious freedom, that kind of speaks for itself. Uh, healthcare, I think we're uh, heading into a train wreck with the Obamacare. Can it be fixed? Can it be repealed? Uh, in any event, it's got to be reworked. And I spoke about the 12-point uh, Dr. Chad Mathias plan. He and I have spoken. He's running for uh, Congress in Alabama. It's a well-thought-out plan. I've adopted uh, adopted it and it's spelled out in uh, the website. DocMorland.com, folks. Uh, uh, DocMorland.com is where you can get information on that. Staying on the Obamacare, th th there's a lot of people that have a lot of mixed emotions about this. Congressman Barletta has been on with Congressman Kelly uh, uh, on this show a number of times, a, a couple times, and there, there, there are parts of the Obamacare that, that, are, that are, are good, okay? Uh, the 26, uh, you know, keeping 26 uh, pre-existing conditions. conditions. This is what they still want to have, but yes. however, in your district so far, um, uh, there, are, there are people that are, who have been affected by Obamacare and not in a good way, from what, well, from what we understand. I've spoken to patients uh, time and time again in the last several weeks, and they've uh, passed on these horror stories about trying to get on the yeah. uh, .gov, um, medicine.gov site, taking days, literally, still and uh, running into brick walls and bureaucracy. And I, I think we're seeing a little bit about how government medicine is not going to work that well in the VA uh, system uh, with these uh, waiting lists uh, and resulting in the deaths of um, vets out in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. So, so okay. I'm just very leery of, of the whole uh, machination. So, Dr. Moylan, what you're referring to are facts. Correct. This is not rhetoric, because I opened the show saying we're so tired of hearing people talking about rhetoric. I've been hearing about all this you know, stuff that they're going to do for the, especially our senior citizens and people. That's why they're discussing, discussed it. And hopefully, you know, they're predicting a low turnout for the primary election, which is sad. Because, but you know what? I don't blame people to a wife because they're saying they're so fed up with people who are running for office, who are in office, and have not done anything that they promised to do. Now, let's go back to when you ran for coroner. There were some uh, things that you stated, because you are an elected official. You said you were going to do certain things and have you accomplished them as coroner because you, you already ran for office. I could, I could say, well, look, he, he ran for office, and this is what he said. So, so far, what have you done as, as a coroner that you said you were going to do? Well, um, some of the, could we go to those bullet points? Yes, um, there they are right there. You know, um, 
some of those were problems that we identified uh, ahead of time. And one was the um, electronic record. The previous uh, administrations had just used paper and it's just uh, very difficult to work with. Certainly we can't do any uh, research studies uh, with it and that was one of the fir first things that we came out with was using a commercially available secure digitalization of the records. Okay, it's so called eSeedon and we've been working with it now until so our third year. So you said you were going to do it and you did it. And th that was okay. one of the things. Other, other point. The other thing that we identified was education. I was committed to have the best educated uh, deputy coroner force in the state. We're moving in that direction. We've also held um, an annual conference that was last uh, April 26th, approved by the Attorney General's office to give uh, coroners in the region a um, their annual uh, credits. The other thing that we started was suicide prevention, working with other professionals in that realm, a bereavement program, and in fact on Memorial Day over at the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute we'll be planning uh, trees, inviting families of decedents to honor both uh, children and adults that have uh, That means uh, so much to the families. It, it, really it certainly does. It, it gives them closure. If you were, if you were hurt and something happened and, and you would understand why that is so, um, so important to them. Um, Go ahead, I'm sorry, yeah. continue. Well, some of the other points, moving uh, the decedents around from mortuaries for autopsies, <laughs> et cetera, that was a large expense. We've been able to seal that off with a, um, a county rental vehicle that uh, answers a virtual autopsy. I've spoken about that a few times. It's basically doing CAT scans instead of opening up the bodies. and Which that saves thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars, right. and again, many yeah. families and have religious objections to the autopsy procedure. We now have our own morgue over in uh, Schuylkill County. It's a mobile uh, vehicle, and we've offered that to the uh, Disaster Mortuary Operational Response Team, or DMORT for the uh, region. And finally, it's not listed on the bullet points, but uh, w about two months ago, we conducted the first coroner's inquest uh, on a suspicious death that happened in prison, you know, which is particularly um, important coroner duty if somebody dies while in custody. We did have a coroner's inquest, first one in 20 years. We had six of our citizens look over the evidence and give us advice. I hope to do that on uh, two other occasions as we go through the summer. And uh, you were worked very closely with the district attorney, uh, yes, uh, Christine Holman. Dr. Holman. Christine Holman was uh, key in uh, helping me conduct this. So let me understand something, okay, here again, because again, uh, we hear a lot of people, we're going to do all these great things. You ran for office as a coroner, and you said that you were going to accomplish some of those things that we just saw, okay, and you've accomplished them. Okay, so therefore, I would have to say you have a 100% record so I far. Have a, I have a track record. Yeah, there, you yeah. have a track record. And, and here again. Of civil uh, service. Yeah, which is important. Okay, so, so Dr. David Moylan says, I want to do this for elected office. You did it, and they voted for you, and you're doing what the people voted for you. That's, yes. that's to me, important. Okay, let's move on on some other areas that people are concerned about, okay? Uh, and that would be the debt, okay, and how the debt is affecting us today. So if you will. Okay, well, there's something called the debt clock, and you can find it on the internet, and it just <coughs> shows the, the money ticking off and uh, what the uh, federal government is committing itself to. And when Matthew Cartwright took office, which would have been January 3rd of 2013, that number was staggering, $16.4 trillion. I just checked it earlier today, and it's up to $17.48 trillion. And the debt ceiling has temporarily, at least temporarily, been removed till after the upcoming election. And to relate but, that uh, is for what it looks like well, in dollars. Yeah, uh, if you uh, took... Uh, here it is, you know, here it is, folks. This is One dollar bill started stacking. One dollar bill started stacking. It's amazing. And uh, the total uh, height of the stack of one dollar bills would be 67,000 miles. That, Sam, that's a quarter of the way to the moon. Yeah. And I'm wondering if this is President Obama's uh, new space uh, program. 
how to get back to the moon. And, and here again, that affects us deeply. The debt is affecting us deeply. And uh, so you're going to be concerned about spending uh, w when you become a congressman, correct? Uh, absolutely. And I'm going to say, I'm going to reach back, and this goes back to the 60s and 70s when we were younger men. But uh, Eldridge Cleaver, and no, he's not June Cleaver's uh, husband. He was a, <laughs> he was a Black Panther. Yeah. But he said, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And, and to a degree, Matthew Cartwright has inherited this, uh, this debt, and he hasn't done anything. Except make it go higher. It would go higher. And it, uh, what can one man do? But it becomes your, your uh, problem once you assume the office. As we move on with this, okay, this is well, showing us what? This graph yeah, here This again. is a graph showing the relationship between the gross domestic problem, or product, the gross, it should be a problem, the gross domestic uh, product, which is basically all that we manufacture, all the services that we uh, pro uh, provide, and what's the relationship between that and the national debt. And Sam, on the right-hand side of that, it's a approaching 100%, where our total debt, the 17 uh, trillion, is equal to our output as a, a nation. That is not a good position to be in. And you've heard me talk about uh, history. I kind of am a history buff, military history buff, and, but history in general. And we can look back into history. I think I have a, a slide coming up here. Uh, the Weimar Republic. This was basically after uh, the Kaiser, after World War uh, one, 1919, there was a little bit of a revolution in Germany, and the Weimar Republic took over. And they were doing this uh, quantitative easement where they were printing money. And in fact, at one point, they had 200 factories that were making pulp. They just, had, to that, just to print the money. That was their major and industry, was up. making pulp. Yeah, wait, 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 this, guy, this, <laughs> this German gentleman I was on his way. I my house, but. Uh, he, <laughs> he was on his way to buy a loaf of bread. And it was, you know, a couple billion Deutschmarks. Yeah. All right. and, the, uh, and this. So is, hopefully we won't get well, that far. But well, as, there's as, a historical yeah, president. Yeah. As the congressman uh, who had been on my show said, we're heading in that direction. I think it was a 20, 2030 or something like that. Every penny will be spent, uh, you know, just paying our, you know, our debt. We will have nothing. As you continue on, okay, as uh, folks, if you just tuned in, you're watching the Sam LaSanne show. Uh, Dr. David Moylan is running for the congressional, uh, 17th Congressional District. He's here on the show telling, asking you, first of all, for your vote, but explaining to you why you should vote for Doc Moylan uh, on May 20th. Okay, well, let's go back to that slide again. Okay, well, uh, we just heard about the price of bread. Right. There is definitely a connection between the price of, of a gallon of gasoline and a, a loaf of bread. And I just saw a statistic from 1939. And at that point, gasoline was 10 cents a gallon. A loaf of bread was 9 cents a gallon. So that's the correlation. So here and we go. 2009. Okay. Earlier this week, I filled up um, uh, twice at the gas pumps. And I have a bumper sticker that says the fir first day of Obama's presidency, gas was a buck 86. And here's the receipt. I think you, yeah, this is interesting. Yeah, I put the little uh, yeah. red arrows right. there. So and there you I go. I have about an uh, 18 gallon tank. So yeah. it was. I was running on vapors when yeah, I, I went yeah, in there. Yeah. But uh, the two uh, receipts total, uh, next slide, $129.49 for two, two trips to the pump. Yeah. If I was uh, buying gas, what it was when uh, President Obama took office, you saved I would have put 66 bucks and 92 cents in my See, pocket. And, 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 and Dr. Moylan, this is what I'm, I'm saying, where people are, are getting hurt every day. Uh, that's only gas. How about the poor people that have fuel oil? That can that, that they get shocked when they get the fuel oil, or there or the, thank God we have Marcella gas and we have you know hopefully more to do with clean coal, but they're paying through the nose and they're saying why why are we paying all these prices? Well, what's happening with our government? Who do you have there in your government who's making this happen? You see, that's why when people call me up and or say uh, vote for this guy, vote for this guy, vote for that guy because you know he's going to help this. That's nonsense. Vote for the person who's going to do what they say they're going to do. Doc Boylan said, I'm going to do this as a coroner, and you've accomplished that. You, you have an elected, elected position. So I think that's where it, it, it's concerning. So what will you do in that respect, you know, as far as energy is concerned? Well, 
could we take a look at the next slide? Is it? I've looked at the voting record on Congressman Cartwright. How does it apply to energy and coal? And there's, there's about five or six votes. He voted nay against all of them. I can't go into the detail of each one, but basically some of them had to do with EPA regulations. That for an EPA regulation to come down the pike, it has to be justified according to what it does to pr consumer prices and job creation. So and he voted against putting restraints on the EPA. According to what congressmen on the show have said, that this is following the record of what Obama wants to do. Yes. Okay, Obama wants to really have a, a declare war on there coal. There is a war on coal. And, and it's, it's, a, it's going to affect thousands upon thousands of jobs, okay, in, in, in your district. If, the gentleman from Muzik is a foot soldier in the war on coal. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I would do would be to try to reverse these irrational EPA regulations that are costing jobs in the 17th. So you're going to move in that direction? Yes. Then we have what other slides do we have that you wanted to present? Okay. Uh, unemployment. No, unemployment. This yeah. is a, a hot topic, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and these are the latest statistics. They're for, for March. I don't have, I have national statistics for April. And the yeah. national uh, statistic for unemployment is 6.3%. But to put things into perspective, in March of this year, national was 67 So that's improved a little bit. Pennsylvania State, 6%. Six, six six and and the 17th district, on the average, is about 7.4%. Okay, so and we can look at a closer. Yeah, let's look at a closer. Now, this, this is where it becomes really interesting, okay? And with all due respect to anybody, but I, folks, I'm, a, I'm giving you the facts as well as Dr. Mullen is. You're talking about the state of Pennsylvania, where to, when Tom Corbett came in, we were up pretty high, and he brought it down to 6%. Okay, that's the state. Then, of course, the national is coming down a little bit, which is great. But now look at... Look at your areas here. What, you well, know, Luzerne, eight percent. Lackawanna, over seven. seven. Carbon, seven point four. Schuylkill, about the same. Monroe, they're all worse than the state in, and the national. Now this is level. Congressman Cartwright's district. Yes. Now you would think that because he has the president on his side, he has the vice president, he has the uh, you know the the Senate. Uh, along with Casey, okay, who is a Democrat, you would think that they'd be able to really bring jobs into their district uh, uh, because they have the power with the, I mean, Biden's up here all the time, yeah. Obama comes up here, you know, Pelosi's up here, Clinton's come up, up, up here, they're all up here at telling people the, how wonderful they are, how great they're doing, but yet we're not seeing any results. Uh, am I just well, crazy here or what? Uh, Sam, one of the things that I am not asking for is earmarks. Or pork. Yeah. I'm not asking for pork or earmarks. I think there, we should continue the moratorium against earmarks. Because again, we're borrowing 46 cents on the dollar. We can't afford ear, earmarks. But we have the natural resources under our feet that we could bring to bear. We need to become another North Dakota. Zero percent unemployment. So let's look at, uh, here again, people watching this for the first time. This show, folks, is seen on SSPTV.com. Uh, we've been on since 1994, but my guest is Dr. Dave Moylan. He's running for a Congress on the U.S. Congressional 17th Congressional District. Very important to know who's running and, and get their information. Now let's see, let's wrap up. We've got four minutes. What does Dave Moylan stand for? This is a, a, a wrap-up. Okay, well, uh, again, my signature issue is um, protecting human life, the sanctity of human life. The Constitution will be in my breast pocket all the time. Health care reform is going to be extremely important. Um, it counts for 16% of the economy. We need responsible uh, management of carbon-based energy sources in northeast Pennsylvania. So. You know, I know I know you a, a long time as well as I don't know the other candidates, but I met them and they're and they're fine people who are you, who are uh, running in the same slot. But Dave Moylan to me uh, seems to be a person who has 
a lot of feelings, uh, personal feelings for people's health and keeping them alive. That's what you do every day. That's you my, save lives every day. That's and, my day job. Even yeah. when someone calls you and says, I've been through chemo, I've done this, etc." you said, well, come in, and then you'll even take it a step further. You'll call the specialist in California with your show, Modern Medicine. Yes. You recently, so, you know, when you're dealing with a person who has substance, that's always important to me. I think you're a person that's shown substance, you have sincerity, you have a faith, you have a family that you love. You have people that you care about. And you do have a faith, and you practice your faith. And I think that's so important. Well, thank you, Sam. And um, I'm not only asking for people's votes on May 20th. I'm asking for their prayers also. Because uh, if I do emerge victorious on the 21st, that's just the start. And um, again, it's going to be a lot of responsibility. And I'm pledged to live up to that. I open the show up. Dr. Moreland, saying that we have heard from so many people over and over again what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, okay, uh, and the rhetoric, and they're going to bring the energy cost down. I remember listening to all presidents and how we're bringing our energy costs down, and they're just going to the roof, and they're going to get higher, I understand, for the summer. I hope I'm wrong, but based on what I'm hearing from AAA, and I hope I'm wrong, believe me, I do, uh, the, how much can we t t take? I mean, it's just pounding us. So as a U.S. congressman, I'm hoping that you do what you've done, what you said you were going to do when you became coroner in Schuylkill County, and fulfill the promises that you said you were going to do. That'll be job one, uh, Sam. But is will this be a full-time job for you? Oh, absolutely. It's um, um, it's a requirement of the um, position, and I hope to have the good work that's being done at the Simon Kramer Cancer to continue as a foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I certainly believe in <laughs> term limits, and I, I think that more than three terms is probably not warranted. If you can't get the job, then step aside and let a younger person take over. All right, Dr. Moylan, here we got you know people who are dedicated you, yeah. you know, to have lost their lives and who have given up. Uh, families who are still suffering because we want to live in a better America and uh, unfortunately today when you look at Benghazi and all the stuff that is, is so corrupt it's, it's, it's pathetic uh, uh, and American people are just fed up. There, there's a touching moment. Well, you Sam, I, yet again I'm a movie buff, I'm a history buff but this is in the next slide or from the movie Saving Private Ryan and as we're approaching Memorial Day I recall something that my old man once told me and voting even primaries, general elections, was a, a sacrosanct thing in the Moylan family. And he said that there were too many people reposing, brave men and women reposing in the horizontal position in American military cemeteries across the world. There's about 128,000 men and women in such cemeteries. And not to vote is to disgrace their memory. Well, Dr. Mullen, I want to wish you the best uh, of luck, okay? And um, when you become congressman, I'm sure you're going to fulfill what you said. Folks, I'm talking to Dr. Dave Moylan. Doc Moylan goes to Washington. He's asking for your vote May 20th. I'm saying to you folks, go to his website, docmoylan.com. Learn about the facts. Don't let anyone tell you who to vote for. Find out yourself. Don't let these hypocrites who call you just for their own benefits tell you to vote for someone. We'll see you next time on the Sam Lasancho. Show.